Welcome to RSM Gaming. I'm Rush, and this is going to be a quick little video about crosswind landings in the Mustang in DCS 2.0. I was just uh, trolling around the forums, and I saw a thing there um, from uh, Habu69 who was saying, Hey, I'm having trouble in um, DCS 2.0 and struggling to put an aeroplane on the ground in a crosswind. So I thought, hey, why the hell not? Let's just make a quick little video. After all, it is 4 a.m. in the morning. Um, so I've just got some real basic settings here. I've just done a quick mission plan. So I've just got seven meters a second. That works out being 15, um, 15 knots. Uh, we're going to be landing um, on uh, whatever the hell it is, McCarran Airport. Uh, McCarran Airport, runway 25. Um, so this is giving us a 15 knot direct crosswind. Um, I don't have any turbulence on, I don't want to have any added um, degree of difficulty, I just want to be able to show um, the basic technique. And you can see in the camera there below me, we've got some fancy pass, fancy, fancy pass, fancy pants Christmas or Canadian style Christmas socks because it is minus a million here. So anyway, let's shut up and get flying. You're going to have a give me, I'm not going to be able to look at the camera too much here during this flight, but I'm going to do my best to talk through uh, everything um, through the landing and with a bit of luck we'll do it in one pass or we're going to be a flaming wreck and um, I'll be embarrassed, but uh, hey, we can't all always stick these landings. So let's go ahead. We're lined up here on the runway. We're a fair way out. Let's just go flying. And I have no sound right now. So that is a really good start. I am just going to pause this for a second. I know where the problem is. What a winner. All right, that should be fine now. There we go. We can hear we got our gear warning. Production value win to begin with. You'll have to forgive me, like I said, it's 4am in the morning. Alright, so uh, let's just get it set up here. So uh, I'm just basically going to be making um, a straight in low approach, low break into a right hand break, and uh, then we'll uh, hopefully plop the thing down on the runway. As we get close, you'll start seeing the crab angle that we need. Um, this is not really going to give us a good indication as we'll be overhead the field at about 300 mile an hour. So uh, anyway, you can see there's quite a bit of a crab angle here. There's nothing really to do to get set up here. Um, I'm going to set 2700 RPM and leave it there. Um, one thing to note here is uh, I don't see anyone writing about this any time I ever see the forums. Oh my god, Windows, are you serious? Of course, that would be exactly when I am recording. Ugh, oh, this is already going so well. There's a strong chance we're going to end up as a flaming wreck. There's one thing I don't see a lot of people talking about anyway uh, when they're landing these things is the prop never moves. Yes, it never moves in a Mustang. Well, it does. But uh, on landing, you set 2600 or 2700 RPM and you do not touch it. That's one of the rare aircraft where you don't bring the prop up. And there is a simple reason why, and that is rudder authority. Now, the P-51 Mustang does not have enough rudder authority without using your trim wheel at takeoff and landing. It just simply doesn't. That's why you need six degrees of rudder to the... Um, uh, right on takeoff and about minus one degree um, on landing when you don't have power. Anyway, here we are. We're pulling into the brake now. We'll go ahead and set about 24 inches of manifold pressure, pitch the nose up and keep uh, climbing and turning. Since we come through 250 mile an hour, throw the gear out. There it is there. We'll go 10 degree of flat. I see the gear light is on, bringing a little bit of power here. Just check out on our wing. We've still got a long way to turn here. Uh, while we're doing that, we'll go ahead and give it a few good clicks of trim nose up. Uh, but yes, anyway, back to the rudder authority in the Mustang. It has a problem with it. In fact, the reason why you only select 2600 or 2700 on the prop um, on landing is if you have to go around, you are unable to get enough... Uh, rudder trim in to actually counteract the torque of the prop. There is just not enough there. And this is probably maybe a problem with some of your landings is keep the prop at 2700. Do not bring it up any higher. You do not need to go full fine for the landing. So all I'm doing here is just making sure that we um, wingtip was with the uh, within the runway there. And I can see I'm about 150, 160 mile an hour. So I'm a little bit fast. So I'll just bring the power back here a little bit. And we just start our constant rate turn. So yeah, the Mustang has uh, a, a rudder, rudder authority problems. It just simply doesn't have enough to deal with the horsepower required to go around. Considering you're going to have gear out, full flap, and all that other crap, uh, you're going to be in a very, very, very draggy state with the aircraft. Uh, so this you want to avoid at all costs. 
Anyway, time to worry about landing here. You can see you've got a nice, gentle, gradual rate turn here. And uh, we're just positioning ourselves along the runway. Make no mistake right now, though, at 15 knots, if this was real world, if this was real world, this is a serious landing. This is uh, um, not quite emergency levels, but there's serious, serious issues here. Um, this aircraft, as I said just before, has rudder authority problems that uh, you don't want to be playing with um, uh, crappy crappy flight controls. So anyway, I've got a little bit of power on here. I'm putting in a full boot full of left rudder, a lot of left aileron, and we're just falling out of the sky here. So I've got a lot of left rudder, a lot of right aileron, a bit of a bounce there, so I'm going to bring a bit of power in. You can see we're moving around the runway quite a lot. Now as we slow, I'm bringing the power off, and as I slow, I'm slowly adding more and more aft stick, and more and more right aileron, until I get to a point where I'm holding full aft stick and full right aileron. And then I just let the aircraft uh, slow down without touching the brakes. Now if you've been watching my feet, you can see they are doing lots and lots of movements. Uh, so if you don't have rudder pedals and you're using a twist grip, this will be quite a large problem, uh, is you just simply don't have the fidelity on a twist grip. Why we're talking about that here as well, make sure you've turned off rudder assist and you've also turned off auto rudder. If you have either of those things on, you will crash instantly. You'll just land and you'll just fall out of the sky. Well, you won't fall out of the sky, but you'll fall over and you'll end up into um, a huge uh, flaming wreck. There we go. It wasn't the most beautiful landing, of course. Maybe we'll go and do another one and just talk our way through it, just so we have a little bit more time. But um, it wasn't the most beautiful landing, but like I was trying to say on the approach, make no mistake, make no mistake, is landing a Mustang with a 15-knot crosswind is really an almost emergency-style scenario. The aircraft simply does not have the rudder authority to deal with it. So even at a 15 knot crosswind like this, uh, I almost had full left aileron, def uh, full left aileron, full left rudder deflection um, to just get the nose pointed straight down the runway. Uh, it is really pushing the limits of the aircraft. This aircraft was not designed to take off and land in um, crosswinds that large. It's just, it's just not designed. But it is possible. This was a 15 knot crosswind. We just did it fine. Um, even with the bounce, we're still able to correct. The main thing that I did there through that landing, other than all of this fancy pants rudder work there is keeping just a trickle of power on. If I pull the power all the way back to idle, I immediately, immediately lose rudder authority because I now have no prop blast air energizing the air that's um, traveling over my rudder there. So if I have just a little bit of power on, I didn't come to power off until I was probably about maybe halfway down the roll there, just so I could maintain a tiny little bit of rudder authority um, with just the blast from the prop. Like I mean, this is a 13.4, 13.2, 13, maybe 12 foot prop. Uh, it, it is a massive prop and even ticking over to 1000 RPM, it is pushing a lot of air aft. And so keeping your controls, uh, your ailerons rudder elevator uh, with uh, airflow, uh, keeping them fed with airflow um, is really, really important in a crosswind. You run out of um, any of your control uh, if you run out of control authority in any of your three axes, you're in a lot of trouble and you are going to flip over and you're going to crash. So maintaining a little bit of extra speed, a little bit of power, you will make these landings stick. Um, so anyway, uh, let's let's put my money where my mouth is and let's try and do it again. So uh, I'll just quit it here and uh, let's go again and fly again. Hopefully we won't have any Windows updates and stuff like that. And it'll be able to take a little bit, hopefully not try and rush the landing. So many things happen in the landing, it's really, really hard to do a, um, a commentary and try and fit everything in. So you will have to forgive me for that. So let's go ahead and do it again. Uh, we'll get all set up here. Uh, we'll come in with about 35 inches of manifold pressure. I don't really care. The manifold pressure doesn't matter here. And uh, 2700 RPM. So I try and do as fewer things as possible, uh, as fewer things as possible when landing the Mustang. That's why I always do a low break. Uh, if I'm ever flying online, or even if I'm not flying online, I never cheap out and, and in a position like this and go for a straight-in approach. If you do this, you're probably going to crash. 
always go into a low or a high break, no matter what you're doing. There's no scenario when it's not a good idea. The main thing is, is I don't have to do all that stupid stuff and like try and push the airplane around in the air and slow it down. I can just, I can arrive overhead the field any speed and I can land uh, without any issues whatsoever. I could lose an engine, I could lose everything, and uh, I'll still be able to make the field as long as I'm over the threshold of the runway at about 250 mile an hour. You can you can sneak it in if you're below 250 mile an hour and you lost an engine, but it's uh, it's pretty close. You're um, really pushing the limits, and it really would depend on the uh, uh, the winds, the current winds. But here we got 15 knots from our right, so it would make things uh, quite. Di oh, actually, I think you'd probably do it here under 220 mile an hour. I'm not going to try it. That's for another video. So anyway, let's go ahead and turn back on our head tracking here, and let's get flying. So uh, need a little bit of left rudder here, and then we'll fly overhead the field. We'll see we're nice and low. The other good thing why I like doing this is when you're online, invariably there's always someone that's going to pull out in front of you. They're sitting on the taxiway. They don't see you. At least when you're doing this style approach, you have some idea of what's around you. So anyway, here we go. We'll go into the brake, 60 degree angle of bank, about 24 inches of manifold pressure, and about a 2G pull, which... Uh-oh... Apparently my input device got unplugged. I'm not sure what happened there. Alright, we'll go gear, we'll go flaps. Everything is falling apart. Can't even make a video properly. Uh, okay, so we're at 200 mile an hour. We've still got our nose up. We're still pulling around the corner here. Let's go ahead and just have a little look out the side. We're looking okay. We don't have as much altitude as we did last time. But that is okay. I've had to bring in just a touch of power there, so we're up at about 25 inches of manifold pressure. And we're looking good, trim is all set, except I need a few more ticks up of elevator trim, so there we go. And give it a few little notches up there. So I always start my turn, my base turn here, at 150 miles an hour. Uh, if I'm a little faster than that, I know I can um, hold my nose up a little longer in the turn. I can just adjust everything that I ever need to do to make a good landing. Anyway, we got 150 mile an hour. Let's start the turn. Let's go pull full flap. Here we go. Spamming full flap all the way out now, which is, means we're going to have to lower the nose to keep our descent rate. And we're a little bit low here, so I'm going to raise the nose a touch, reduce that bank angle, and just stabilize the approach. Okay, we're nice and stable now. So again, in uh, another uh, another point to note here is don't try and land on the piano um, on the piano markers there. You will not use the runway. We got like 9000 foot of runway here. Use it. If you're landing on a small runway, yeah, then you have to deal with it, but if you have lots of runway available to you, don't be scared to use it. Uh, all right, here we go. We're just about lined up. So we've got about a 20 25 degree crab angle here. It's pretty sporty. And uh, we'll just go ahead and line up. We just keep letting the aircraft decelerate. Notice how I'm not entering into the crab just yet. Okay, we're a little bit slow, so I'll bring in a little bit of power. And now let's go into the cross control. So here we go. There's a, just about full left rudder. As we're adding in that left rudder, going to right aileron, we can see we've got quite a large right wing down. A little bit too much left uh, rudder. And we just keep pulling the power back. A bit more of a bounce again, so just bring in some power. But we still should be able to make this stick. There we go. I'm on the deck... Adding more and more right aileron, more and more aft stick, and there we go. I'm at full aft stick. Aircraft's now um, powers back at idle. So even though these weren't good landings, I still bounced. I was able to add just a little bit of power, uh, which just kept all of my controls happy, and the aircraft didn't fall out of the sky. We didn't lose any any, uh, any real... Um, uh, effectively, I, I had complete elevator control, and I had a little bit of um, 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 prop blast over the wings. But anyway, we're able to stick all of those landings here at 15, uh, 15 knots. So uh, we'll go ahead and swing around here and look at the good job we did. So even though um, it felt like I used a lot of runway there, we still got this thing stopped in about 5,000 foot of runway. And uh, it does sound like a lot, and we can shorten that down if we want it to be accurate. But again... Back to the first landing is we're not trying to be accurate in this scenario. With a 15-knot crosswind, we're not trying to be accurate. We are just trying to recover the aircraft safely. That is your only goal with a large crosswind in a Mustang. Recover the aircraft safely. Do whatever you have to do. Use 10,000 foot of runway. Use 20 if you have it available. Um, but you are just trying to recover the aircraft safely. And if you use the correct controls... Um, and uh, if you use the correct controls, the aircraft will land, it will stick, and it will do everything you want it to do. Again, just to talk those through, is whatever you're doing when you're in the flare, 
play with the rudder pedals. You're going to be dancing. I hope it showed up well in the video below. You will be dancing on those rudder pedals and then progressively add aft stick and aileron into the wind. So if you saw my stick, if you saw my stick movement, if I could draw, I'm even going to draw it. Oh, no, I can't. Disregard. Um, if I was to show you uh, on the screen here, let's just take this area here as my um, uh, my joystick axis area, this box. My joystick here was going from the center into the flare. And then as we touched down, or as I, as I started to slow, my joystick tracked in this direction, into the wind and aft stick. That is a direction that always travels until I have full aileron and full elevator deflection holding the aircraft on the ground and playing with the rudder pedals. That's all I do. Once I have the stick in that full elevator, full aileron into the wind scenario, once I'm there, it's just keeping the aircraft straight with rudder pedals. It's as simple as that. The only other tip is just leave a trickle of power on. Just a tiny, tiny little trickle of power. Uh, if you bring it back to idle, you will lose rudder authority. The aircraft will start um, uh, weathercocking back into the wind, and then your landing starts looking like crap. A wheel hits the ground, and you spin around, and DCS physics take over. So just land with a tiny, tiny trickle of power. Even though I bounced twice there, had to bring in quite a large amount of power, a large, a large amount of throttle, I was still able to stick the landings because I didn't just firewall the throttle. It was a nice, gradual input of power. Everything in this aircraft is managing uh, vectors of force. That's what it is. But anyway, it would diverge into tailwheel theory there. Anyway, I hope that helps. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, and uh, maybe I'll just do uh, a quick external view. I don't know. I don't know how the replay system in this thing works too well. So, um, yeah, if, you, if you're done seeing the video, that's fine. I'm going to fumble around here trying to get a replay. Can I watch? Can I watch a replay here? I don't know if I can. I, I really haven't stuffed around with the DCS um, uh, replay system at all, so you'll have to excuse me. But uh, hopefully... Hopefully we can just watch this. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to sit here and watch the video. Um, so... Uh, I'll keep this running. If you want to watch the video externally, you can. You'll see these bounces, and, and I'll try and show the camera around so you can see my control authority. But uh, that'll be it for the, the lesson the lesson type thing. This will just be the um, watching the actual result. With this first landing, I knew that when I touched, I touched to the right-hand side of the center line, and I kind of bounced across to the left-hand side. I didn't quite have the right controls. But again, we'll stable, and uh, the, the recovery ended up working out for us. So, uh, yeah, I have no idea how to control this. I don't even know if I can zoom, uh, make it go faster or whatever. But, uh, hey, whatever, who cares? Actually, no, this was the first landing. I don't think I... Yeah, I just reset, didn't I? I didn't take off. Disregard, this is just going to be that next landing. That, the, the last landing we just did there, so... I do really, really like 2.0. You really, really are uh, <laughs> treated to a fantastic looking flight sim in DCS sometimes. I, uh, I just jump in airplanes and fly around here. It's um, just so pretty to look around and explore. So a, a, a note as well is all of these, this flight technique here, if you don't do this in the Spitfire, you're going to crash every landing. If you... <laughs> Because the Mustang is very forgiving because uh, because its wheels are quite a far ways outboard um, uh, of the fuselage. So it's very, very forgiving in a landing scenario. If you get a wing low or anything like that, the wheels are going to be there to catch you. When the Spitfire comes out, which is a few hours from now, um, this was the, the load or something disconnected. Um, when the Spitfire comes out, if you're not holding correct landing technique here, because of the, sh the, the narrow track undercarriage, um, you are going to have a bad time, and you're going to crash every time you try and land, any time there's any kind of crosswind. Uh, the aircraft is just going to spin around on you, and you're going to be sitting there going, I don't know what happened. So, if you're struggling with this stuff, do it in the Mustang, uh, or you're going to get very frustrated with the Spitfire very, very quickly. And to complicate things even more, the, the Spitfire is even... Uh, it even has less... Uh, not control, but it has... It, it can't handle crosswinds that well. 
because of the short undercarriage. The Spitfire was never designed to land on a field like this. The Mustang was. The Spitfire was designed to point into the wind, hit full power, and away you go. And even then, it didn't matter if it snaked left or right. And same with landing. It didn't really matter. Uh, so in DCS, we don't have those grass fields yet, except for when Normandy comes out. When it does, well, that'll be interesting to see. But uh, yeah, the, the reason, again, uh, what I'm trying to get at here is uh, when you're in cross controls, you have a wing into the wind, right? You have a wing that is lower, that your lower wing is always pointing into the wind. And the Spitfire, you do that, narrow undercarriage, you can actually jam a wing um, into the ground. And in fact, uh, my background is uh, working as an engineer on these aircraft, uh, Warbirds. And uh, I had to repair our Mark 16 Spitfire when uh, it made a landing in a, in a pretty harsh crosswind. And uh, it actually um, dug the left wing into the, into the runway. And luckily, all that was damaged was the pedo tube. But uh, you would absolutely cringe if you knew the cost of just a single pedo tube in a Spitfire. Uh, anyway, here's a landing. So you can see we got a wing low into the wind. There's the bounce. Power comes back on just a little bit. You can see we are all over the runway here a little bit, but we were stable. We were stable. It wasn't pretty, but we made it work. Yeah, the Spitfire was uh, performing at an air show at um, Gatineau here in uh, Ottawa, and uh, as it made its way in, um, it uh, touched down, had a little bit of a bounce, and uh, then the left wing just came down, and where it was landing, it was on like sort of like a slight embankment, and the uh, yeah, the uh, the pedo tube with the pedo mast and the pedo head um, just dragged into the ground and uh, got quite damaged. But uh, luckily, the 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 wing, the um, the internals of the wing, none of that was damaged at all. It's just a testament to how strong the wing is. But uh, um, yeah, Spitfires, uh, you're gonna have fun when it comes out. But uh, yeah, anyway, there it is. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, good luck. Have fun and uh, happy Mustang landings.